member of the Teamsters Union when he drove a truck to put health through college, where his nickname was Frankie Smooth Talk. On the picket lines outside Eastern installations today, that is the kindest thing they are calling him. Here's ABC's Mortine. To the striking machinists and the union supporting them, Frank Lorenzo is as popular as a thunderstorm in a landing pattern. It seems as if the unions are not so much fighting one company as one man. Lorenzo's got to go. If he would spend as much money on his airline as he's doing trying to break the union, this would probably be one of the best airlines going. The union's tactical battle plan, outlined in this memorandum, states, make Frank Lorenzo the issue. Depict him as the man who'd cut any corner to make a buck. The unions contend there's plenty of history to do just that. They cite Texas International, Lorenzo's first airline, and his first strike. Finally, after four and a half months, a contract most favorable to Lorenzo. And then there's Continental's history, the Lorenzo takeover, the broken promises. Not to move offices, he did. Not to sell planes, he did. And not to fire workers, he did. We want a contract! And the bankruptcy, which Lorenzo says was necessary to save the airline but which labor says was engineered to break the union. Continental is now a non-union airline. Frank made himself the symbol uh, in terms of uh, union labor, the symbol of uh, you know, everything that they are opposed to. Lorenzo's their enemy, and they have long been his. What the union is really trying to do is wage a public relations battle and to wage a, uh, a, a political battle. Uh, and not sit down and try to work this out and negotiate it. Lorenzo says the strikers won't sacrifice to save Eastern Airlines, which was losing money when he bought it. Eastern workers say Lorenzo is out for himself, that greed is his co-pilot, that he wants to shrink unionized Eastern to expand non-union Continental, or do to Eastern what he did to Continental, break the unions entirely. The unions say the process is already underway, that he has fired Eastern personnel and moved to sell off Eastern assets, the shuttle to Donald Trump, and Eastern's highly profitable reservation service to Lorenzo's parent company, Texas Air. Some say that's like robbing Frank to pay Frank. But you can't take major money makers for the airline, strip it, and then say to the employees, I need something from you to keep the airline going. The airline unions argue that the way to keep the airline going is to get Frank Lorenzo out of the cockpit. Morton Dean, ABC News, New York. Well, as the machinists suggest, the way to keep Eastern going is the major concern for the machinist union. But for organized labor as a whole, there is much more at stake here than the fate of one particular airline. Here's Stephen Ogg. Ever since airlines were deregulated in 1978, the history of strikes in the airline industry has been one union failure after another. 1981, air controllers are fired by President Reagan because their strike is illegal. 1985, Continental Airlines goes into bankruptcy and union contracts are declared invalid. Continental Chairman Frank Lorenzo hires replacement pilots and machinists at lower wages. 1986, flight attendants strike Transworld Airlines. Within two months, they're all replaced. Some labor economists say President Reagan's tough line against the air controllers was a signal to employers. The message to the White House with, with the employers was that they can fight unions and that the government would...